everyone. Welcome. This is your midday love break, and I'm so excited to have you guys joining me today. This is a special edition. As you may or may not have known, over the last month and a half, actually, um, I've been doing a really special series, and it's called, it's been called the Surviving the Holiday series, because during the holiday season, um, life seems to get really hard, which means relationships seem to get really hard. So I wanted to create something special to where I was speaking directly to those of us that are experiencing this, where we're talking about topics that are real life, we're getting real. Um, if you've watched any of the previous um, Surviving the Holidays episodes, we've talked about some pretty on-point topics that most of us struggle with um, when the holidays kind of come around and roll around. And they're different, except the themes are kind of always the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over to my Facebook page. I want to make sure that people are hopping in and that you guys are able to see me and hear me. Um, and I'm going to share this. So if you feel like, you know, sharing this video, if you feel like this is a topic that people you know probably want to know about, probably need to know about, let's just share it. So I'm going to take a minute and share this because what we're talking about today, <laughs> see if I can do this at the same time. Um, I'm just going to invite people to come join me live. Um, there we go. So what we're doing today, you guys, is we are talking about, I think my topic that I put on here was shedding light on loss, coping with grief and loss during the holiday season. And this is a big one. Um, what we're going to do is I have a bunch of questions because hopefully if technology is on our side, um, I have an expert who is going to be joining me in just a few moments um, and we'll be asking her lots of questions and she will just really be able to guide us and give some support to those who may need it right now. So let me know if you guys can hear me. Let me know if, um, yeah, if you have any questions, same, same jam, you guys. If you have questions, put them in the comment section. I'm watching over on my laptop as well as doing this. So I'm trying to make sure that I can capture all of your questions and really stay engaged. Um, I want to talk a little bit about just who I am in case you uh, are joining me for the first time. Hi and welcome. I'm Robin D'Angelo. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist in Laguna Hills, California. So I'm just about an hour and a half south of Los Angeles and an hour and a half north of San Diego. So right in Orange County, smack dab on the uh, South, Southern California, West Coast. Um, and you know, it's really just been my passion and my mission to help couples and singles learn how to ma master the messiness of couplehood. So what I do is I'm big on relationships. Um, I consider myself a love geek. Um, and if you want to find out more about just the way I support and get some other resources, you're welcome to check out my website at www.thehappycoupleexpert.com. Um, as you can probably tell, that is my specialization. That's what I just love working with couples and helping people create their epic relationships that last. So that being said, our relationships are constantly being challenged and, and, and poked and, um, they are constantly, um, you know, they're something that we, since we're a part of them all the time and we're showing up and maybe we're having our own internal struggles, it definitely tends to um, impact our relationships, whether it's a relationship with your partner or your spouse or a relationship with a coworker or a family member. Um, relationships are just that they're relational so it's anytime I'm talking about relationships and I'm giving advice and support it doesn't have to just be if you're married or engaged or partnered um, unless you are completely secluded and do not ever interact with anyone else you are constantly in relationships whether it's with the gal that you're checking out with at the grocery store <laughs> or whatever, you're constantly in a relationship. So that's why I'm always talking about this. Hi, Jill. Welcome. 
Okay, so you guys, here's what I want to do. I've introduced myself. I want to dive in. I want to bring on our expert. So I'm going to see if I can invite her on. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Technology is so not on my side today. Let's see why I cannot bring you on to join me. <laughs> um, okay, Jill, I see that you're here and I don't know why it's not letting me bring you on with me. Let's see if maybe I do this. Hmm. Okay. So we'll see if something changes now. Huh. So I'm going to keep talking. I'm going to see if we can get some um, of these tech issues. Those of you that have been hanging out with me this month, you guys have been awesome. Um, you've been noticing that there have been a few tech issues going on. And um, for some reason, my live feeds are not loving me bringing on my experts. Hmm. <laughs> trying to see what this message might mean. Um, Jill, if you have a minute, just comment in the comment section and just say something like, hey, I'm here, and maybe that will change things. Um, okay, let's see. So you guys, because we're talking about grief and loss and really how to survive this throughout the holidays, I just want to make something clear. When I say how to survive this, I'm talking about how to emotionally and mentally survive um, grief and mourning during the holidays. Um, I trust that you have the physical <laughs> down, that you are, you know, physically taking care of yourself um, as far as enough to show up, enough to be here watching this. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about what it takes to emotionally and mentally get yourself through the holidays. That's the goal. <laughs> if technology is on my side. Um, because I do have um, one of my guest experts who is a colleague and a dear friend of mine um, who is a therapist out in Riverside, California, and she is a um, grief specialist, you guys. So why not bring on the best of the best when I can? Jill, if you're hanging out and watching, um, just put a comment in the comment section and just say, I'm here, and I'll do my best to bring you in. I want to just dive in because these are some questions I have for Jill, but I can share with you guys too, just to give you a little bit of background. Um, when I first started my path as a therapist years ago, wow, almost 10 years ago, um, one of the first, actually the very first place I was ever at um, where I started doing therapist or started doing therapy with couples and individuals was at San Diego Hospice. Now, for those of you who don't know about hospice, San Diego hospice is, or just any hospice actually I should say, because San Diego hospice is no longer there, but hospice is a place that once someone has received a terminal illness diagnosis and the doctor has indicated you have six months or less to live, whatever their illness is, the treatment stops. So hospice says, we are going to create an environment for you to live your last days, weeks, or months, or hours, um, as comfortably as possible. So treatment no longer stops, and they are, um, they are given medications that make them really comfortable. You know, sometimes um, that's things like morphine. So that's the, the role of hospice. And that being my very first placement um, as a baby therapist, um, I became a certified grief counselor. Now, there's a lot that goes into that, but I just want to give you guys that just to start um, as we wait for um, Jill to pop on here. And Jill, just comment, I'm here. You know, once you're here, I can see you're here, but it's not letting me just invite you from that. So see if you can make a comment in the comment section. Um, I want to talk about like oh, different kinds of loss. I think it's really important to understand this, you guys, because oftentimes people will think like, well, no one I know has died. I'm not grieving. Um, I just want to like throw out a couple examples of loss that we may grieve over. And by the way, grieving, and Jill may have more information on this, but grieving is really truly just... Um, it's kind of like the action. It's what we do um, when we are experiencing some kind of loss. Um, and so I just want to talk about different kinds of loss. So there can be something like a job loss. That can be huge, right? 
Because if you lose a job, think about everything else that's impacting, right? Your ability to um, maybe support yourself and your family, the ability to go on those vacations that you were planning on, um, the ability to move forward in your professional um, role. If you were to lose something like a job, it could also impact loss of relationships with those people that you worked with. Again, there's so many things that are connected to loss that one loss can create a sense of grieving many different things. Other examples of loss. I'm just going to throw out some, you guys, and see if any of this resonates with you. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comment section. Um, if you um, or someone you know experiences divorce, that's a loss, right? That's a loss of a relationship. Has their partner physically left? No. But that relationship is no longer what it was. It's the loss of a marriage. Um, you know, sometimes I will talk to clients um, that are newly empty nesters. And there's this loss, the sense of loss of I'm no longer a, a mom. I'm no longer a dad. Like I know technically and <laughs> logistically I'm still a parent. But like my role as a parent actively parenting someone who is no who's not an adult like that is gone and oftentimes well yes there's there can be an excitement around woohoo the kids are out of the house this now means a newfound freedom or that freedom that we used to have yay um it can also bring with it some feelings of loss of what's my role now who am i if i'm not a mom or a dad what am I going to do now? What's my value? Like, so all these questions can start coming up. Something else that people might not have thought about too is say that um, a family member or someone you know and love is getting divorced. There can be a sense of loss because the person that will no longer be in your life because of that marriage Say that I have adult children and, um, or an adult child, an adult daughter, right? I have a daughter who's in her 20s. She's been married for a couple years and she's now getting a divorce. I, as the mother-in-law, I am feeling this incredible sense of loss. I'm feeling this sense of loss around my son-in-law is no longer going to be my son-in-law. I'm feeling an incredible sense of loss of, I was supposed to be a grandmother, Oh my gosh, I'm not going to be a grandmother anymore. Maybe later, whatever. But there's all these things that we connect to. And we can feel a sense of loss. And that's the hard part. Um, I see that <laughs> Rihanna and you're here. I love that you're here. I need to know that Jill is here. So Jill, if you're here watching, <laughs> put a comment in the comment section. Otherwise, I'm having trouble bringing you on. Shocker. Technology is not on my side. Hi, Christina. Um, oh, you're on a another phone. Oh, let's see. Um, I can do it. Oh, awesome. <laughs> it's working. Let's see if you can join me. I'm oh here. my goodness. You're here. <laughs> Finally. I'm so glad to have you joining us, everyone. This is Jill Johnson Young. Um, I'm so happy to have you joining us. Um, I've just kind of, I know you've been hanging out and watching, but um, I want you to just, you know, briefly introduce yourself because I'm going to give everyone um, your contact information, but share with everyone okay. kind of who you are and why you do this. I am a licensed clinical social worker. I work in Riverside, and I did hospice for well over a decade, um, and hospice is my mm -hmm. heart place. Um, I love working with people who are grieving and people who are dying. It's not something a lot of people can say, and um, right. I'm doing this today because grief and loss is an inherent part of every holiday season, and I'm also mm -hmm. married to a mortician, and this is our busiest time of the year because actually... 4% more deaths occur between Thanksgiving and New Year's than any other time of the year. And more people die younger during this time of the year. So it really is true that there are more deaths at the holidays. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I had no idea. You didn't know wow. that, did you? 
I did not suicide know that. Suicide rate goes and down. Do know... Okay. But everybody else's, the natural deaths go up. Oh my goodness. What? And I'm just curious, your theories on that, if you have some to share. I think it's a whole bunch of things. I think when someone, having worked in hospice, I had a lot of patients who, when they were very ill, they just didn't want to wait for another holiday season. They were just done. I had one man who loved Thanksgiving, but he had stomach mm. cancer and he could no longer eat. And he died three days before Thanksgiving and his family knew exactly why. And they had a big Thanksgiving in his honor. Oh. Um, and there are others who just don't want to see another Christmas. And then there are those who wait and wait and they get through that holiday and then they're done. Yeah. And they, and it's not that they want to die. They're not abandoning their families. Don't hear me say that, Yeah. but they just can't do it anymore. It takes a lot of grit and determination to try and stay there. And that wears people out. Absolutely. So I lost a spouse right um, after Thanksgiving and I lost a dad right before Christmas and it's, you know, things happen, but that means that at Christmas and the holidays, I just had a client leave who just lost a very beloved grandmother. She can be permission to say so. And mm. um, we talked about how to include grandma in Christmas because mm. the hol the funeral's over. Everyone's gone on with their regular lives and she still misses grandma immensely because this is first holiday, only a few weeks out. That yeah. makes it really hard. Yes. So we want to yeah. include grandma in the holiday and we're going to. And I love that you're already jumping there. into, yeah. And I love that you're already jumping into this idea of there are things that we can still do, even if we have physically lost someone and it's fresh and it's new. And how can we not necessarily lose that connection to them and they still remain a you part of our lives. have to include them. Right. I lost my first spouse um, on Good Friday, which mm -hmm. kind of stinks because then there's Easter and that whole rising again thing and that didn't work. Um, mm -hmm. And my niece really let the minister have it during the children's sermon that day. But <laughs> you have to have humor when you do grief and loss. Yes. But that means at Christmas, we put ornaments on the tree at our house. Every person we've lost, everyone who's died, we use the word died, um, every pet. Mm -hmm. We have rabbits and cats and birds and dogs on our tree. We have people on our tree. Mm -hmm. And it's not a moment of sadness so much as it is telling the stories and remembering them. And when we're having a meal, we'll sometimes have a favorite thing that they would have liked that we all still like to. We don't put food on the table. They would like that we don't. We're not that crazy. Um, but, <laughs> and we, we talk about who they really were because, you know, we watch A Christmas Carol every single Christmas Eve for a reason. That's a tradition that came from someone who's no longer here. But mm. I am not going to put Lutefisk on the table because it's just the most disgusting thing on the planet. And I may be Swedish, but we're not <laughs> serving it. Right? And so I love You I talk love about that. who they really were. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Because yes. they're not so, they died. So let's, yeah. And, and let's talk to that person who may be watching this, who may be grieving, okay? And who may not be mm -hmm. necessarily grieving the loss um, of a person physically, but any kind of loss... Can you talk mm -hmm. to, you know, what can that person expect as far as feelings and thoughts and behaviors and emotions? Like what, <laughs> what can they expect, Jill? And all of that. And what do we do to talk to them so that we don't upset them? Yes. And the yes. one thing we can do is say the person's name or talk about the loss. Yes. It's your first mm. Christmas after the divorce. You're in a new home. We just had how many thousands of people lose their homes in California yes. alone? We've got people in Puerto Rico yeah. who are out of their houses, people in Texas and Florida still out of their houses, people in Montana right. that we didn't even notice that their houses were burning. All those people right. have had a significant loss. And it, a loss is something significant has left your life and there's a hole. Yeah. And that's a divorce. It's a loss of job. It's a, um, a divorce. It's the end of a relationship. It's I retired mm -hmm. and I'm not going to the holiday Christmas party this year. Oh. It's... Yeah. Any of those losses. It's I've moved and we're now serving in Germany. How many military families do we have? And their kids are suddenly yeah. far, far, far away from everybody they know. And it's really mm -hmm. cool. They get to go to all these, you know, German or Swiss or Japanese kinds of markets wherever we send our military to serve. But grandma's not there. That's a loss. Right. Grandma's still alive. Right. We can talk to grandma right. on the computer now. Good. Grandma's not there to hug us. Not so good. 
So right. we have all but of those kinds of losses. We do. And I know we have to be about, able to talk about them. Yes. And I'm thinking about too, um, a specific kind of loss that I'm seeing um, a lot more is, um, you know, adult children are getting divorced and I'm working with the parents and saying, I lost a son-in-law or a daughter-in-law. And then what's connected to that is, oh my God, I'm not going to be a grandparent like I thought I was going to be, at least not with this family unit and, and things like that. So again, I'm wondering for those of us that love or know someone who's grieving any kind of loss, how, how do we support them and how do we not? <laughs> what are some things we need to not be doing or saying or, you know? What we don't want to do is pretend it didn't happen. Hmm. Because a lot of times when someone's had a loss, we all go, oh, I can't say it. It's going to upset them. Hmm. Or, you know, we have Facebook now and it reminds us. It sends us reminders of everything hmm. that's happened for the last... I don't know how many decades now, right? Yeah, right. And so here's your life five years ago. Oh, look, there's a casket, right? Or <sighs> there's your, your, your daughter-in-law that's not there anymore. She's not a daughter-in-law. And mm. so they may put something up that says, you know, I really kind of sucks right now. They may not be looking for sympathy. They may just want you to acknowledge, you know, it really does kind of suck. It's yeah. sad. I know yeah. you're missing them. Allow yeah. them and support them in ventilating about it. Mm -hmm. If you can include them in some way, if there's a daughter-in-law they're still close to, but the son is still there, have a little something or other with the ex-daughter-in-law. You don't have to play yeah. sides. Ooh, the biggest I love divorcing that. divorcing group right now is 50s. We've got people in their 50s and 60s who are getting ready to retire. Kids are out. You yeah. know what? I really don't like you anymore, and I'm divorcing you. That's a not happy yeah. couple side. And yeah. then we've got adult kids who suddenly don't have married parents anymore, and they're not okay with it. Yeah. They're really not. Right. And I've had divorcing couples say, what's a good year for me to get divorced for my kids? The answer is never. That doesn't yeah. mean stay married if you're not going to, but it means there's going to be a loss and you have to acknowledge it. And that means also navigating that, who am I going to spend time with? Mm. Which family comes right. first? Am I going to divide Christmas Eve into three sections, which is crazy and shouldn't happen? Or do we adapt? Mm. Do we change how we are doing things? In in mm -hmm. my family, when some when there's a loss, we sometimes change what we do. And I tell mm -hmm. families, for instance, I work with dementia families. That's an ongoing loss. Yes. Because Ooh. if there's dementia, it can go on for ten years or it can go on for three years. And at some point in dementia, that person can't go to large group events. Mm -hmm. May not recognize people. May recognize them, but not recognize the grandkids. People in advancing dementia can't tolerate little people running around. It, right. Their vision is impaired. Their hearing is impaired. Their thought process is impaired. And it's irritating. Right. It's like having too many kittens. Yeah. And so there's a loss with that because you can't go to the big yeah. family function. And if you're the caregiver, you can't either. Oh, so I'm so glad you said that. there may be that come up about that. Mm. Because yeah. you can't take mom. And people will try. When I do my dementia group in December... We always talk about what you're not going to do and awesome. what you might do. It might be the Christmas Eve is now ordering in pizza. Pizza Hut is fortunately still yeah. open oh, or yeah. whichever brand. I don't care. Right, right, right. <laughs> what about, what about for the person? Not a commercial. Yeah, right. What about for the person watching this right now saying, um, I'm feeling all this stuff. I'm feeling the loss. I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling angry. I'm feeling all these emotions. Um, and I don't know what to do with this. I don't know how to take care of myself. I don't know how to not burden others. I don't know how to ask for help. I don't know how to vent. Like, what are some tools and tips that you can share with them of like, these are some great ideas of how you can make sure that you're taking care of yourself and at least feeling supported or trying to get support. When I worked for hospice and still now I talk called raising the white flag, right? Mm -hmm. This is too much. I need help. And Typically, all of us, especially in our culture, have been really cultivated in this thought process that we have to do everything on our own. We have to be strong enough. We have to keep going. And then we get messages from people, oh, you're so strong. I don't think <sighs> I could do that. And what I tell people is, please tell them you don't want to be strong. This is like you don't, you don't have a choice. Yeah. You don't get to curl up under the covers and not come out. You know, you mm -hmm. still have to, like, go to the grocery store and other stuff like that, although there's Amazon. So <laughs> you, you, you want to be able to support them in 
you want to talk about your loss. You want to tell people, look, I may just need to, to vent. Can I have 10 minutes? Can we go to Starbucks mm-hmm. and we just talk? Can you just listen? Yeah. We, it's, as therapists, we call it holding space. Yeah. Right? For other people, it's, can I just have you listen to me for a little while? Mm. And it's, I am too tired to think about cooking. Do you think on Thursday you could drop off, you know, a frozen lasagna, if nothing Love else, it. right? Yeah. Don't make a yeah. big thing and don't make a crock pot that I have to return to you, but do something. I'm, the kids are driving me crazy. I don't have the energy to do packages and kids. Could you take them to the park or the jump trampoline place or do something and get them out of my hair? Because mm-hmm. I need that space right yeah. now. It's nuts and mm-hmm. bolts. It's getting enough sleep. And sometimes sleep is hard mm-hmm. to come by if someone is stressed because that increases our cortisol yeah. level, which decreases our melatonin level, which makes us cranky and not sleep. And if you go to a not enough sleep, then you can actually get psychotic. And that's really unpleasant. So we really oh, want someone so to get enough sleep. Yes. There's melatonin. Yes. There's essential oils. I do all the woo-woo stuff mm-hmm. with my folks. Um, journaling at night before bed, turn the screen off. I know we're on a phone right now on a computer. Turn it all off an hour before you go to bed. Will you do some sleep Mm. architecture? Because you really want to build a whole process about sleeping. And so we want you to think about, get a journal out and just write everything down in your head. And if you're angry, write that down too. And don't use that to go back the next day and build up another whole sense of that. It's just get it out of your head, yeah. right? We do that for our computers. Mm-hmm. They're allowed to update yes. and download. White, our brains deserve that too. We can use white oh, noise. We yes. can use music. Mm-hmm. In my bedroom, I can turn on music on my, on my uh, television and then turn off the screen. And so I have something nice. in the background that's not got words so that I can at least kind of take myself out and out of that alpha brain wave because it's usually there way right. too long and late at night. If it's somebody who's really had a recent loss, anticipate that at two in the morning, you're going to wake up because at two in the morning, anyone who's very sick, really not feeling good or grieving is going to be awake two to about four in the morning. And then you have permission to turn the screen back on and sit someplace else and watch TV or read a book or whatever you need to do. But then when you start to feel tired, make sure you're listening to that and go back to sleep and sleep a little later if you can. We've got holidays on the weekend. These are really helpful. We get to sleep in. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Well, and I, what I appreciate about all of these tips and tools is like these, these are applicable. Like we can do this stuff. You can put on some music. You can bust out the essential oils if you need to, or white noise. Um, For those of you that are watching and listening, there's an app I have because I have to have white noise when I sleep, and so I downloaded an app that says bedtime, nighttime fan, (laughs) and it's like. Plays the noise right. of a fan just blowing air, and I put my earbuds in. So, there are things out there that we can do. And something I just want to kind of piggyback on that Jill shared too is sometimes when there's a loss, like a loss of a relationship, and it's not amicable, and um, the other person is not excited about this loss, there can be some yucky messages coming in, whether it's via text, via email, phone calls, something Lock that it. I have found to be. Yeah. Not only block it. Um, love that. You do have a do not disturb function on your phone more than likely. Um, if you're wanting to respond, because maybe you do have feelings of guilt. Maybe you're angry too. I always say, open up an email, type it all out, send it to yourself, send it to your therapist, send it to your one friend who's not a family member (laughs) Mm -hmm. and just, or just get it out. Like Jill was talking about, get this stuff out of your brain. But if you're having a response to this stuff, get it out. Maybe you open your phone and do a voice memo and say, text received from XYZ at this time. And here's my response and just talk it out. And I found that people love that. Oh, I don't have to just let it stew. So there's just another little thing, you know, and Jill, when we're thinking about grief and loss and what it looks like and how long it lasts, um, I have personally had people ask me or say to me, you know, well, this person experienced loss like four months ago. I think it's definitely depression now. Like who doesn't get over it at least a little bit more in four months. Right. So how do you, can I slap somebody? (laughs) Yeah. 
<laughs> with love. We lovingly slap you, but come on. Um, can you talk about the, just educate. Can you talk about the difference between depression and grief so that our listeners and viewers can understand that and have some compassion? Let me give you an example. Remember the shooting, the mass shooting in the um, stadium in London last year at the concert? There was a big rock concert. Mm -hmm. There was a, a well-known person on the news a week later, and they were about to interview one of the band members. And they said, he's really having trouble coming on because he's crying and he's sad. And somebody mm -hmm. said, but it's been a week. Oh, my gosh. Right? Like, <laughs> I have nothing to say to that. <laughs> the process of finishing the relationship, which is what grief is, is finishing out what you've left undone, what you haven't said, mm -hmm. what they didn't get to say to you, the apologies, mm -hmm. the things that should have happened you didn't get to do. When you finish those in that relationship so you can take them with you, that's when the grieving is finished, but there's still sadness at times. And it can take months and months. It depends on the person, depends on the loss. It depends on if the loss was anticipated or not anticipated. Someone dying in the Cajon Pass versus someone who had cancer and you had all the time to do the things you needed to do, those are different losses. Right. And part of the issue with that time frame thing is that if someone goes too fast, it can upset people. And if it goes too slow, it can upset folks because we all have our own right. construct of what grief is supposed to be. And it also mm -hmm. can be upsetting when someone can, you know, someone died last week and they can still smile at Christmas. It's, but you're, you, you, they just died. Why are you smiling? You shouldn't be happy. You know what? No. You can still have yeah. sunshine, even though someone died. You really can. So the process is as long as it needs to be. If I have someone come in and see me and they say it's been two years, then I get nervous. And then I want to find out what they've been doing because grief is actually mm -hmm. working through grief and grief work is actively participating in the work. Missing someone yeah. goes on long after you finish the grief work. I will still head out to the cemetery probably tomorrow and take a couple Christmas trees and some decorations and put them on the two headstones with my name on them that I share with my spouses. And that's not because I'm so much sad, but it's we shared Christmas and I still share Christmas in whatever way that is. Yeah. And my daughters will take mm -hmm. them to their birth mom and to their birth brother who also there because they share Christmas with us. But it's not so much sadness. We do, however, miss them at this time of year. We're mm -hmm. done with the relationship, I, but they're still with us. Yes. And then we put their, yes. their pictures up I, on the Christmas tree and we laugh about them. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> not, not out there. Because I, uh, I have a Christmas ornament with one of my spouses wearing something that they absolutely hated to wear. And they said they never want to see that picture again. So I put it in a frame and I hung it on the tree. And I did <laughs> it before they died. And I've done it every year since because I'm a little twisted. And you should be able to laugh. <laughs> during the holidays, even though someone yeah. died. So I think we need to be careful not to expect yeah. people to be done at a certain time, in a certain length. It's what that person needs, mm -hmm. but we don't want them to sit there. Depression, on the other hand, is um, suspect if someone has a family history of depression, a personal history of depressive episodes, personal history of anxiety episodes, and they are not able to find any joy in anything they used to. Because even when you're grieving, you mm -hmm. should be able to find a little bit of the joy. Um, they mm -hmm. can't find a way to get out from under the covers. The thought process is still not pulling out six to eight months later. Because when you're in first grief okay. process, your brain actually changes in how it functions. And so you do feel like there's cotton yeah. batting inside your brain and you're not thinking and you get car, car tickets because you didn't notice that red light. Whoops. You know, that's grief. Eight months yeah. later, that yeah. may be depression. If someone is okay. crying all the time, instead of grief attacks where it happens some of the time, that's, that's mm -hmm. the difference. Suspect. Okay. I don't know if well, that makes and sense. I, I'm so glad. It totally makes sense. And I'm hoping that our listeners and watchers are really able to, you know, keep that in mind as they're thinking about the people in their lives or even thinking about themselves. And I just really want to highlight you giving people permission to mm -hmm. still enjoy to still have joy and feel joy and not just feel it, people. You have the right, <laughs> we are both giving it to you, to express joy 
during times of loss, during times of tragedy, during times of grief. Please know that and please hear this. Um, Jill, we're getting close on time, people, so what I want to do... Oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I want to say, if you've got little people, don't expect them to have yeah. the intensity of the loss and let them have mm -hmm. normal. Let them do yeah. it. If you need to not have normal, do it elsewhere, but let them have, let them have the holiday. Mm. Great, great advice. Um, let's talk resources really quick because you have an amazing I one. Do. Can you talk about the book that you there have created? Is. Yes. So it's I have a little blurry. Let's talk about it. We'll... Yeah. Perfect. I have an online grief and loss program called Your Path Through Grief. And I put it together because I had so many hospice families and so many of my clients who won't step foot in a grief group. I'm one of those people too. I don't go to them either unless I'm running them. Small confession. And then I made a workbook to go with it. And the workbook is actually a standalone mm -hmm. and it gives people the process to walk through ending the relationship and taking the good parts with them and the permission giving to find the joy in life and to figure out how you're going to remake life. Because when we've had a loss, it's not something we've chosen. And we got a new path mm -hmm. that we didn't choose, but we've got to figure out how to make it ours. So somebody else doesn't choose for us how to do it ourselves for, for us. Yeah. So it's a really cool little workbook. It's about 55 pages. It's got a lot of space for writing because as a therapist, I really believe in journaling. And we know by the research okay. that actually journaling is one of the number one ways to work through emotions and to recover. Yes. Yes. And so I will put a link here, but for those who are just like chomping at the bit, where can they find this information right now? If they're like, I want it right now, take me there. <laughs> on Facebook, I'm at Your Path Through Grief. Um, and on the web, we're at yourpaththroughgrief.com. Just stick all Perfect. the words together and, and there it is, Your Path Through Grief. Awesome. And you guys, I'll put links on there for you too. Um, if you're, maybe you're listening, listening while you're driving, not watching, um, but you're not at a place where please you don't. can access that. I will put all these. Yeah, <laughs> please don't. Um, I also want to just throw this out there that if you've ever had any affiliation to any kind of hospice, whether it was a loved one that was there, um, typically they provide those grief support groups for as long as you need them. Not always. <laughs> don't hold me to that. But most hospices Some are better do than that. others. Um, mm -hmm. yes, yes. So oh, thank you. So if you go to one, you're like, oh, hell no, go to Jill's online <laughs> um, <laughs> process. You can even reach out to Jill and just say, what do you suggest? Yes. You know, this is, this has been a hard mm -hmm. process. And then, um, yeah. for those who may be experiencing, um, something like a divorce, something that I recently found out about, um, is something, and you need to mm -hmm. kind of Google it, see if it's in your area called second Saturdays. So you guys just check it out. Everyone in some areas, um, it's every, it's the second Saturday of every month and it's a divorce support group where you have um, attorneys and accountants and a therapist. And so they kind of give you, yeah, it's amazing. I just, I was so blown away to hear that this is even available. There's one up in um, Orange County here near me. So anyway, you guys, if as you're listening to this, you're thinking about your particular loss and you're, you have questions, reach out. You can reach out to Jill or myself. Again, I'll put both of our links on here so that you can connect directly to us. And Jill, you know, I just want to ask, you know, as we're kind of closing out today, if our listeners and viewers take away one thing <laughs> from our talk today about grief and loss and surviving the holidays, what do you want that to be? I want them to remember the loss and remember if it's a loved one or whatever that is. I want them to be okay with acknowledging that it happened, but I want them to also be able to experience some of the joy and I want them to not feel guilty for doing it. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that. Thank, thank you, you so much, Jill, for being here with us. I'm going to pop you out of here. Thank you again. I'm so grateful that you were able to be here Thanks with us. Thanks for having me. And I'll put all your links up. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay. Enjoy the holidays. Thank Bye. you too. Bye bye. All right, you guys. Oh, not only do I just absolutely adore Jill, I'm just really impressed with the work um, that she does, the work that she has done, the compassion and her passion for supporting folks that are going through any kind of loss. Um, obviously, so much so that she's created and written a book, which 
is in, gosh, I don't want to misspeak, Jill, but I think it's um, being produced in like seven languages. Um, she has created, like she said, this accompanying workbook, but it's also standalone. So you can also have this and I'll put all the links for you guys. And I just, I want to thank all of you for being here and being, um, just loving yourself enough to show up for the support, whether it was for you, whether it was for someone else. Um, if this is a message that you feel like someone else could really use, share this. Um, it's free. And I just really, really hope that you guys are feeling supported, that you guys are surviving the holidays emotionally and mentally. This was our last Surviving the Holidays episode. I want to thank all of you for joining me, um, whether you've joined me throughout you know, this whole series or you're just popping on for the first time. Um, I'm grateful to have the opportunity to support. And if you guys have any questions and maybe you weren't um, feeling like asking them publicly, go ahead and private message me and I will be happy to answer any of your questions. And I just want to encourage you guys, um, if you're struggling, you don't have to do this alone in any way, shape or form. So reach out if you don't know where to get help, if you don't know what kind of help you need, but you know that uh, doing it yourself is not working, reach out to me and I'll help you, I'll help you find out what would be the best route for you. So stay tuned. I'll let you guys know about the next midday love break. That may be next week. It may be in the beginning of the year. I'll let you know. I'm still thinking about it. So as usual, you guys, big love. Mwah. Go out there. Enjoy the holidays. And I will talk to you soon. Take care. Bye.